I have 10,000 records. Like, can you name 10,000 records? It's really powerfully driving force. It is an addiction. It really is. It's like, I don't know if it's so much an obsessive compulsive thing. It, it doesn't matter how much, how many you have. It doesn't matter if you have them all, you still don't actually have them all. It would be impossible. And to have every record that you would ever want is impossible as a collector, as a, a fan of music because records are made every day, and there were records made for a longer time than I've been on this earth. So it's like, you know, it's mind blowing. I don't know, I mean, it's hard to explain. I don't know how many people are gonna understand this. I'm sure, you know, people collect everything. Gravy boats, for all I know, you know? Um, those people out there, you will understand what I'm talking about. I have no idea why I started collecting records. I think um, I, I think it was not probably a decision of mine, and, and uh, it was not a conscious decision of mine to do this. Um, it kind of just happened. And at one point, I looked around and I had 500 pieces. And at another point, I looked around and I had a thousand, and then three thousand, and then four thousand. And I really, really, really took a step back. And at around 5,000 records, I think was the first time I ever considered myself a collector of records. It's 5,000. So was, I, I guess I was kind of in denial for a while. But, uh, but for me, it wasn't really about collecting, though. It wasn't about having it specifically to have it, but so much the music. Uh, it was the enjoyability of like, that's not even a word. <laughs> um, um, I, I enjoyed the music so much. I enjoyed listening to it and, and the experiences and um, being, being able to use music as a timeline for me in my life, some sort of uh, uh, attachment um, certain songs or certain records have to individuals or specific times in my life. Um, it's uh, just, again, with romance, you know, <laughs> It, it's just, you know, everybody has a song that reminds them of something. This, the idea of cleaning records to me is a lot of fun. You see it when you first get it and then you clean it up, you treat it well, it becomes a part of your collection or a part of your heart. It's just something that, that I find visually and, and obviously, you know, audibly appealing. It is much more romantic, in a sense, um, to play, actually physically be responsible for the playing of the record. It's interactive. Um, you know, the, the way everything sounds, from, from uh, the way it sounds when you put the needle on the record to the way it sounds when the needle is rubbing up against the in, inner label. You know, it's... Um, Yeah, it's romantic. It's very heartwarming to me. But the record, as it is, you know, like, it's, you can touch it, you can hold it. It's, it's, a, it's a, usually a picture of something, you know, and there's, you know, movement involved in it and stuff inside. And it's just like exciting. It's like unwrapping something. It's inconvenient to get up and flip the record. Uh, but this goes back to the romanticism of it. it you, to actually take part in the, the act, be active in the playing of a record is part of, the, part of it. Um, it's part of being a DJ. It's, you know, you play one song and then you take it off and you play another song. And that's what you do. Like, I, you know, I'm a human jukebox. <laughs> you know? And it's, it's pretty incredible, but it's, you know, it's not easy. I, I am the medium. I consider it to be a translator, you know? 
And I use the record actually to express how I feel emotionally. The chase is definitely a good amount of the fun, but nothing compares with, I think, holding the record in your hand and putting it on the turntable and, you know, hearing the music that, it, especially if it's something you've never heard before that you've been trying to find. The sound of the music coming through the speakers is definitely the most enjoyable part. That's what, to me, that's why it's worth it. The chase is always better than the catch. Um, there's a certain amount of emptiness you feel after you've been looking for something for so long and then you finally find it and you listen to it and you're like wow that was amazing and then when the record's over you're like oh shit that's <laughs> you know that's that okay next part of the process and my love for the format is the, the 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 searching part like it makes you appreciate it so much more when you've been looking for it for three years and you spend five hours at a, at a record store and you and you un, you you, bear, you unbury it from like the stack of crappy records and you find like the fucking holy grail like the the gold mine or whatever at the end of the rainbow or pot of gold you know and you're like wow this is awesome my whole thing is like finding stuff finding out about stuff being the person to find something um you know i've been credited a couple of times with uh you know, finding lost tracks, people, things that no one knew about, you know, or had forgotten about. And the, those are probably the moments I live for. That's, that to me is the best score. Something you don't know about that actually exists and you find it and you're like, whoa, like you had no idea that this was like even like something you were looking for. And there it is. Ta -da. That's the best. The music that I love all was originally issued on vinyl. You know, like John Coltrane never lived to see a compact disc. So why should I have any of his albums on compact disc? You know, they should all be in the way that he knew of them. I'm interested in hearing what something my great grandparents' generation would listen to. And, um, the differences in the feel of the record and um, just having that experience, sharing that experience with them even though they've been dead for years. It's kind of interesting to know uh, what our past is about. It was very comforting to me, something my parents did, you know, uh, listen to records, you know, the whole process, you know. It was at probably at a certain part in my life, point in my life, um, when I was about um, maybe eleven or so. You know, I I actively started taking part in the music that was being played in my house, and uh, and it was something that like you know this massively dysfunctional family could get along over, you know, like there's something we could not be dysfunctional about it was music and listening to music and listening to records. So, uh, you know, that evolving from that to actually being a collector is probably like, you know, there's a lot of psychological reasons behind that. Um, but at this point in the game, I, I actually consider it to be a serious uh, problem, a disability, if you will. Uh, in New York City, there are limited amount of space to be had by one person. Um, and living on a uh, DJ record store employee's salary, it's difficult to uh, uh, be able to have, to actually afford the space to, for the records to inhabit as you know as if they were actual people but they do take up a lot of space <laughs>